Hey, I wanted to pop on here and talk about a big part of my work and it's the inner child work. I feel it is imperative to our healing to really understand what we value, our self-worth, what we value in life and love because that determines how we show up to our own life, right? So when clients come to me, I want to understand the beliefs that they hold about themselves, their worth, life, love, success, money, their health. So we go back to their childhood and kind of try to understand and often they'll say to me, well, I had a pretty good childhood. I didn't have trauma. My parents stayed together. And I say, really, that's not what it is about. It is about your conditioning, what you learned as a child. Because did you know that 95% of your beliefs, your thoughts, and therefore your choices, the way you operate every day, 95% of that comes from your subconscious mind. So you are unconsciously going about your life, only 5% awake and conscious to your life. So our subconscious mind was developed in our formative years between the ages of three and nine. I, have, I think it's more like three to 12. So these beliefs, the, what we identify with, these beliefs we learned as a child. I always say it's like we are children in an adult body living out our life. So that is why this work is so important to help us understand these beliefs that we created as a child and how they are working for us and how they are not working for us in our own life. So I want to give you some examples that maybe some of them will resonate with you to help you understand how you might be subconsciously, unconsciously living out your life. So one client lived in complete chaos. Her parents were always yelling, living at this heightened state. So chaos became normal. It was normalized in her home and she learned that was comfortable. And that is what she thought life was. So she, as an adult, has been searching out chaos her whole life. And when things would get calm, she would create chaos. She would self-sabotage because that what was normal. That's what she thought was normal. And she, she consciously can't stand it. And so this is the work that we are doing, is to release this idea, this belief that there needs to be chaos in order to live. Another um, client lost someone very important when they were five years old, someone they loved, that made them feel safe, that made them feel seen. So as an adult, she's been so afraid to love someone in fear of losing them. Or how about a child, her, her dad was not around. He was not around and when he was, he wasn't emotionally available. So she learned that this was normal and in relationships, she keeps finding the guy that is not emotionally available because that is what she believes is normal and it's playing out. That's not serving her in relationship. Or the little girl that was told she's not good enough. You'll never be good enough. You'll never be like her. And so she determined as a little child, she was determined to be enough by pretending. So she would be the life of the party. She would put on these masks. She would compliment everyone. She would become whatever people wanted her to be, to be like, to be enough. And as an adult, she's been doing the same thing, wearing her mask, obviously not feeling good enough, but more importantly, she can't show up authentically because she's pretended for so long. And this is the work that we're doing. Or the little girl that was ways very poor and her parents always talked about money, that they're never gonna have enough money. Money doesn't grow on trees. You'll never be one of those people with money, right? Always wondering when the other shoe was gonna drop, when they weren't gonna have enough money. Well, she learned to be very successful in life. She's very successful today. And she still can't see herself as one of those people. And she fears losing money that she can't even manage her own money. So there's this fear around money and this has been playing out her adult life, okay? Or the little girl, her mom was always talking about her body and food and so she has body image issues and struggles with her uh, nutrition and food. Or the mom that said, you have to be thin to get a man. You have to be thin to be beautiful. If you're thin, a man will love you and want to be with you. And she's had uh, body image issues and weight issues her whole life, right? Because she learned that thin meant beautiful, that thin meant that a, ma a man would want her, that she would be attractive. Who did you have to be to be the good girl, right? Did you have to get straight A's, be the best in your class, best on the swim team, everything had to be perfect? You learned that that's how you received praise. 
being the good girl. So as an adult, you are the perfectionist, always pushing. Everything has to be perfect, and that's how you value your worth. Everything has to be perfect. There's no such thing as perfect. So you are fighting an uphill battle, and you're always looking for doing more, doing more, and again, getting that external validation. The good girl, you're perfect. Or how did you receive love? Right? Did you please mom, dad? Did you, again, being the good girl, doing what you were told? being quiet when you had to be quiet, then that's what you become, the people pleaser. No boundaries, always giving, right? right? Or, God, I'm trying to think of others, there are so many examples. How about, I see this so often with my clients, is there wasn't emotion in the home. You didn't learn how to express yourself, to emote in a healthy way. People didn't express anger, everything was quiet, shoved under the rug. You, when you were um, sh having an emotional outburst, be quiet, you're okay, fine, stop crying, go to your room. So you didn't learn how to emote in a healthy way. So as an adult, you repress your feelings, your emotions, you don't allow yourself to feel them. And then you suppress them, you hide them. And what happens? You often, this, this, when you don't learn to express yourself in a healthy way, you often are reactive in life, right? You get to your boiling point and then you explode. And this creates a lot of also um, issues in relationships because you can't express how you feel. You don't share how you feel, express it. You're not able to express your needs and express in a, in a healthy way that where your emotions and your needs and feelings will be met. So this is why the inner work is so important. The inner child work is really understanding how you develop these beliefs, how they are tucked away in your subconscious mind and how you are unconsciously going about your life. So the, the doing the inner work is connecting the dots, understanding, and then doing the reparenting, right? It's so important. It's our responsibility as an adult to reparent ourselves. This sweet little child that was innocent, that developed these beliefs about herself. So we actually, I have my clients hold this little inner child with such love and compassion and telling her what she needed to hear, that you are safe, that you are so worthy just as you are, yet you are good enough just as you are, that you are loved, that you are perfect, beautiful, it has nothing to do with your size. And you begin to heal and do this inner work. You begin to hold yourself, repair yourself and trust yourself in a new way. You begin to remove these emotional, mental blocks and experience your wholeness, the beauty of you, knowing that you are perfect and whole just as you are. You don't need to be more, you don't need to perform more, right? You begin to experience your wholeness, your true nature, and it's love, it's love. That is your true nature, love. So this is